Hey, what is going on? It is 12 noon on Wednesday, which means it's time for this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. My name is John Carissimo, and what we're talking about today is cold calling. You know, on Wednesdays, it's Ask the Instructor. We're here to help you understand the technical side of the real estate industry uh, and things and topics that sometimes seem intimidating. Uh, You may have never done a cold call before, which will explain that you have because we've all made a cold call before. But also, if you're wanting to use the phone as more of your business, and, and I don't necessarily mean just cold calling random people you've never met. We'll talk about that because that is one form of cold calling, but also if you're calling a prospect that is cooled off, that's a cold call as well. And those are some of the easier cold calls to make because you already do still have somewhat of a relationship uh, also with your sphere of influence. So this whole episode, what I wanna make it about are, are not just some tips about cold calling, but how you could get started using the phone more. If, if you don't like that term cold calling, don't use the term cold calling. Just just call it using the phone or dialing or whatever it is that makes sense to you that, that is agreeable with you. Because I know that whole phrase cold calling, that, that could make some people want to pump their brakes like, oh no, the cold calling, I've either had bad experiences on that or I'm afraid of it or I don't know how to do it or I don't know the rules on it or whatever it is that might be holding you back from using the telephone, which is your gateway to business. Especially as, as time goes on more and more, things become more digital, more remote, you've got to take advantage of that technology that we've had for however many years to be able to communicate with people wherever they are on this planet. So we're going to be talking about using the phone today, how it can speed up your business, some tips it is that you can implement about cold calling as well as if you're new to using the telephone, just some ways it is that you could become better at it and instantly really get kind of good, uh, which gives you the confidence Right. The confidence is a big part of this. The confidence to that you know what you're doing, that you can do this, that you've got no problem doing it. So that no longer is a barrier between you taking the action that you need to to grow your real estate business. So that's what we're covering today on this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. My name is John Christma. The show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. You're watching Ask the Instructor. <laughs> You are watching Ask the Instructor. Absorb the knowledge. Become the expert. Hey, welcome back to this week's episode of Ask the Instructor. My name is John Christman. The show is brought to you by the Tampa School of Real Estate. Every Wednesday, 12 noon Eastern time. If you're not subscribed yet, what are you doing? Hit that button. But let's get right into today's topic, cold calling. So cold calling, what is cold calling? What is the definition? What are we dealing with? What are we talking about first and foremost? It's calling somebody who is cold. Think of that phrase like the cold shoulder or where people might be ignoring you. It could be that. It could be where you've had a relationship and maybe you or the other party hasn't paid as much attention to that relationship and it might feel like it's gotten cold. Or this might be somebody you've never met before previously. Those are really the coldest of calls because there's no relationship you have to bank on with this. Or maybe it's not where you kind of intentionally drifted apart from this person, but life just pushed you apart. Whatever the case may be, cold calling is where you're calling somebody, really is the best way to sum it up, who's not expecting your call. So that's what cold calling is. It's calling somebody, not expecting your call. Whether this is somebody brand new that you've never worked with previously, or somebody that you do have a relationship with, but for whatever reason, maybe things have cooled off, or maybe things aren't cold at all, but again, they're just not expecting your call. And so you're calling them, what are you gonna be doing? Well, you're interrupting them. You're always gonna be interrupting them. Well, what if they're at work? Well, you're interrupting them while they're at work. What if they're at home making dinner? Well, then you're interrupting them making dinner. What if they're eating dinner? Well, you're interrupting them eating dinner. What if they're watching TV? Well, you're interrupting them watching TV. What if they're sleeping? Well, then you're interrupting them sleeping. You're going to be interrupting them. Don't be afraid of the fact that you're going to be interrupting them. That's what we do when we make a phone call. Unless like we, we pre-plan this phone call ahead of time through with like text messages or emails or whatever it is, but if you're, you're trying to use this phone call to solicit business, people might be hesitant to schedule a call with you uh, when 
they're not expecting your call. They don't need your call. They, they might not. This is going to be another thing that's important. So number one, understanding that you're interrupting them. Number one, they're not expecting your call. You're going to be interrupting them. And you better have a good reason as to why you're interrupting them. What is that reason why you're interrupting their day? You're interrupting their work. You're interrupting their time with their kids or their family, their spouse. You're interrupting their sleep. You're interrupting something. You're always going to be interrupting them. Why? What is your compelling reason as to why you're calling them? Now, if this is a actual client and this isn't so much a cold call, this is a client you're actually helping buy or sell a house with, they might actually be expecting your call or it's not a surprise when they get a phone call from you because they might not have been expecting that call, but they are expecting to hear from you at some point to give them an update, to touch base with them, to ask questions, whatever the case may be. So in those situations, the reason is going to be a little bit more evident. But let's say you're trying to drum up business. You could just tell them, yeah, I'm giving you a call because I'm looking for business. But, and you know, sometimes honesty is the best policy of just, you know, saying, hey, yeah, you know, I'm just giving you a call, checking up with you. I mean, really the reason why I'm calling you is uh, I need some business. I mean, sometimes depending on the relationship you have with somebody, if this is somebody you have a relationship with, you might be able to be that informal with them. Now, I would not recommend you just call some random person that you've never met that doesn't know who you are of really a true cold call and pick up the phone and say, hey, I need some business. You got any business for me? No, that's not going to work. So you need to have a compelling reason. And and as you get away from a real relationship, because again, if this is your client that you're actively working with, you don't need to say, well, the reason for my call today is blah, 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 blah. You just go right into whatever business it is that you're dealing with. But as you get further away from that relationship into the point where maybe this is somebody you've never even talked with before and you want to, you know, pique their interest or gauge their interest in your services or whatever the case may be, gauge their likelihood or motivation to sell, you want to have a reason for calling. So, you know, one of the, to the top reasons why somebody might do a cold call or to call touch base to them, uh, one of the best ones I think is probably market update. Now, this market update, it can be one of the best ones if there's something going on in the market that's big news. So if prices have been going up faster or properties have been selling quicker or something that's like, wow, look at this. You need to see this. Something exciting, compelling. That's especially when the market updates will work good. So, hey, the reason for my call today is have you seen what's going on in your neighborhood with home values? No, no, I haven't. Well, did you know that home values have gone up over the past six months by 20%? No, I didn't know that. Now, let me ask you this. Knowing that information, and I know you might not have made that decision this quickly, but have you ever thought about selling your property previously? And notice how we're just starting to kind of tiptoe into a deeper conversation. Now, that's not going to be the case with everybody. You might call somebody because that's the thing with cold calling. When they're cold, not only are they not expecting your call, they might not be a fit for your product or service. So what happens when they're not a fit for your real estate services? Well, it's not that they're not a fit. They might not just not be a good fit right now. And maybe maybe that's a follow-up opportunity where you're staying in contact with them. And that's where, again, you're still going to be calling them and hopefully you're maintaining that relationship to make this, to get rid of this cold term, to turn these into warm calls. Because think of when you, you talk to your friends, to your family. Those are warm calls. Or you're talking to a hot lead people that are ready to do business now. When you're making a cold call, you don't necessarily know. You don't know what you're going to get. They're not expecting your call. They might not be a good fit. You're interrupting them. You better have a compelling reason as to why you're talking to them. It's easy to get overwhelmed by all the the ducks you have to line up, all the things you have to kind of put in place to have effective cold calls. And let's say you're missing some part of this picture and your cold calls don't go well. If it's the first time you've ever made a phone call to an unsuspecting callee, you might get really discouraged when you find out this piece of information. 
that they might not be a fit. I mean, imagine you're making phone calls and phone call after phone call, you keep getting sent to voicemail or a number not working. And then finally you get a real person on the phone who actually answered your call and they're not a good fit right now. And it's not just that they're trying to like hide in. They secretly are a good fit. They literally, you know, maybe they just moved into the neighborhood last week. They're probably not going to go turn around and sell their house now next week. So don't get frustrated. This is a numbers game. Like any sort of advertising or prospecting or sales or so on and so forth, there's only going to be a small percentage of your prospects that actually result in business immediately. Now, everybody has the opportunity to become business for you at some point in time, but they might not be ready for that quite yet. And that's where, again, the follow-up is important. You've seen me, if you've watched these episodes of Ask the Instructor in State of Real Estate, you've seen us talk about how important follow-up is and staying in touch with past clients so a new agent doesn't come along and adopt your previous clients for you. Um, But yeah, cold calling, it's a great way because even if this isn't the first call you've made to this, this person who's not a good fit, you know, you want to plant the seed if they aren't a good fit right away for the follow-up. So they say, oh, well, you know, the, I really appreciate you calling, but we actually just moved into the house last week. Oh, well, oh my God, if I knew that, I probably wouldn't have gave you a call. But I mean, anyway, well, I've got you on the phone. I mean, it's, I, I know you're not ready to sell right now at this moment. Um, and they, uh, they just, you just moved in there last week. That makes complete sense. Uh, but I'm sure you guys want to keep track of uh, what your property is worth, correct? Well, yeah, Absolutely. And you want to find out if the property values are going up or going down. Would that be information you want to know? Well, look, here. How about I do this? No obligation whatsoever. Look, this is something I do for tons of people. I'll send you out a market report uh, and give you a call every couple of months just to touch base with you, answer any questions you might have about real estate. Or um, I've got a big network of a lot of uh, of people that can, might be able to provide some sort of service for your house. There's a lot of resources I have available. Uh, I mean, I just want to be of assistance in any way possible because I know in five, ten years from now when you guys are ready to sell your home, I want to make sure that I've provided enough value so there's not a doubt in your mind that you'd want to use me as your real estate professional. Oh, well, that sounds great. Yeah, of course. Who's going to say that sounds bad? Because all those things that I just did right there, and that went really fast uh, uh, of everything it was I was just doing, but one of the main things is I took their guard down by just dropping casually that little sentiment about, look, for when you guys are ready to sell five, ten years from now. So I'm already saying that, hey, look, I know you don't want to sell right now. Because that's going to get really frustrating with them, especially if they've already made this clear that they're not a good fit right now. It's going to get really frustrating with them if you're trying to say, well, you know, come on. I mean, don't you want to sell right now? Or if you go right to, well, who's who's your friends or family? What have you done for them? What have you done for them that would make them confident in referring their friends and family to you? So don't be stupid and ask for referrals before you've earned a referral, before you've shown any value to this person. If this is a brand new person... They're not going to refer you anybody. If they don't know you, they don't trust you, they haven't done business with you, why would they refer you? They're not. So don't ask for referrals right then and there. Work on building the relationship, and then you could ask for referrals. You could even work that into your pitch. It's like, look, I know in five to ten years when you guys are ready to sell the house, I, I want to show you guys so much value that there's not a doubt in your mind that you'd want to use me. And hopefully I get you guys there a lot sooner because I'd love that you'd recommend me to all your friends and family, but I know we're not there yet. So, so we'll get there. We'll get to that level of relationship, but see how I'm, it's, it's, it's that whole kind of idea that I'm not desperate for you to do business with me. I desperately want to help you, but if you don't need my services right now, I'm not going to try to convince you that you do need my services right now. And that's a very refreshing perspective when people are dealing with salespeople because let's be honest, we've all probably dealt with some salespeople before who might not share that same perspective, that they're not there to help you make a decision. They're there to help you make the decision that they want you to make. That, that's, what, that's what gives salespeople a bad name uh, is, is that exact situation right there. So... Again, you're there to help. Well, the one thing I, I've said this so many times. So we've got these two words here, contact and contract. This is one of my favorites. 
contact and contract. What's the difference? There's one letter that's different. It's the R. Because if you want to turn your contact into a contract, and contracts are what get us paid, so if we don't get a contract, we're not going to get paid. So if we want to be able to get contracts from our contacts, we need to add the R. And what does that little mystical, magical R stand for that turns our contracts into contracts? That R is for relationship. Because if you don't have a good relationship, there's a very low likelihood that you're going to get any business, any sort of contract, or anything from this person. So you've got to really work on building the relationship. So not only do you get business from them eventually, but also you get referrals from them, from friends, family members, so on and so forth. Now, some of the other things it is that you could work into, uh, the reason maybe it is that you're calling, because the, the market update, that's, that's a good one that you could pretty much use anytime. If, if you've got nothing else, then market update. Hey, let me give you a market update. You know, market hasn't really changed much. It's been holding steady. That's the update. Not the most exciting news, but if that's all you got, it's better than nothing. Now, don't expect them to, to be, oh, wow, the market hasn't changed at all. Wow, that's fascinating. Tell me more about that. So you maybe want to have some other things it is that you could say in there and, and work into the conversation. Hopefully, you're using some sort of contact uh, manager, some sort of CRM, some sort of database, so that way you're able to track the conversations that you have. You can make notes about this prospect, any, any details you want to make sure you remember about this person, you can put that all in your database there. Because, uh, again, this is something not only you could use for brand new fresh people, but also people that you already have somewhat of a relationship with. Now... Market update, that's a good one. And it could be something related to either real estate. And this other one, you want to be careful here about getting outside of your area of expertise. So this is a great opportunity to uh, team up with some sort of mortgage loan originator, mortgage broker, something like that. Because uh, maybe it's updates on finance. Because if right now you're not giving your clients an update on finance... Now, now what, what, why would you want to give them an update about finance? Well, hey, because interest rates are like rock bottom, lowest they've ever been, that you're basically going to get paid to borrow money due to inflation and all this other stuff we can really get into if you borrow that money today and then pay it back tomorrow with cheaper dollars. So there's huge advantage and opportunity right now with financing, or even as rates are going up, that's like, hey, the rates are going up. You should do this before they go any higher. Or, hey, rates are really low. There's always some way that you can present the information as some sort of opportunity. Now, just because it's an opportunity that you see vividly and you see clearly that you know is going to be good for your client doesn't necessarily mean your client shares that same perspective. And so that's what the conversation is all about. you just sharing that information, and it's not your decision. If you remember that, if you remember that detail, that it's not your decision, it's their decision, and you're just there to help them make that decision one way or the other, whether they lose, use you or not, whether they're actually selling now or they're going to wait, whatever that decision is, you're not going to take it personal. Because if you do, then that's just going to mess everything up, and you're going to fall off of the follow-up. It's not personal. It's not about you. They're not withholding on selling their house because they don't like you. They're withholding on selling their house because they're not ready to sell their house. Because if it really was about you, there's plenty of other real estate agents out there they could hire. So it's not that they don't like you. It's not that they, they, they might not be comfortable and confident in your services and expertise. And that's definitely something you want to accomplish here. But before you even get to that point, they might not even be ready yet for it. But you're there to provide this information so that they can start thinking about that prospect. And maybe six months or a year down the road when you follow up again, they say, hey, how about those interest rates? Are those still pretty low? You know, we've been thinking, you know, ever since you told me that six months ago that interest rates are low, I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe it is time for a change. Oh, wow, really? You don't say. And now I say something like six months because people take time to make these decisions. That's why follow-up is so, so important. So that's another market update that you could potentially do, but team up with a mortgage broker, mortgage loan originator, somebody that knows that financing stuff well to make sure that uh, you're giving uh, good information. And also, so you've got somebody you could send them to. Because if, if you're calling them up, uh, this is one other thing you want to have in here is a call to action. You want to have some sort of call to action planned and ready in advance if it does turn out that whatever you're calling them about is a good fit right now. So maybe you're calling them about finance 
uh, about interest rates being super low. You say, hey, I, I don't know if you've seen the news recently, but have you seen how low interest rates have gotten? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? Do you know how much money you would save if you're either refinancing or getting a new home? Now, you might say, well, John, well, if they refinance, how do we make any money? Well, we don't. That, that's where the mortgage broker, the lender, they're the ones making money when they're refinancing because they're not buying another piece of real estate. That's just one of the ways that, again, we're there to help them. We're there to help them. And that doesn't always mean that we're going to get paid to help them. Eventually, we will. That's the thing you got to wrap your mind around. This follow-up concept, you eventually will get a contract, get paid off of them if you stick it out long enough. If you maintain that relationship long enough, if you have a good, honest, true, transparent, quality relationship with your client where they trust you and you have two-way communication, there's no way they're going to use anybody else. They would feel bad about doing it. But if you don't have a good relationship, if you don't have two-way conversations with your clients, they probably are going to use somebody else because they probably don't even remember who it is that you are or what it is that you do, even if they know you, even if this is a family member. Those are the ones that sting the most. When it's a family member that goes and uses another real estate professional, and here's the part that stings. Oh, that's right. I forgot you got your real estate license. I wish I knew that. I would have used you. Those words. Bad words that we don't want. So we want to have some sort of call to action. So when we do follow up with these people, we're always like, hey, did you hear about financing? Yeah, I mean, I guess you should go to your bank and, uh, I don't know, maybe ask them. Maybe they know about these low interest rates. No. You want to say, hey, you know, I mean, and if this is something you want to take advantage of, I've got a lender standing by that's been working with a lot of the clients I've been calling uh, to help get them the best available rate and really just even see how much money it is that they would save versus their current mortgage. And if you're thinking about buying something new to maybe upgrade a little in size, maybe you're ready for a change of scenery, whatever the case may be, uh, th those mortgage interest rates also apply on the sales side as well. And notice how, again, I'm not pushing these concepts. I'm just offering that information that's there. If they don't want the information, that's fine. You're going to get that with cold calling. Whether you're calling somebody that you already know or somebody that's completely random and that you've never met, you're going to get people that, again, are not a fit. Either not a fit right now or who knows, they may never be a fit depending on what it is that you're calling them and giving them the opportunity to partake in, to invest in, or whatever or services or whatever it is that you might be calling them for. If it's buying and selling real estate, they might not be a good fit for your services. Now, there probably will be at some point, but really that question of whether or not you're a good fit for them at some point is, do you have that relationship still? Because that's the name of the game, especially when it comes to residential real estate. Now, when you get outside of residential and you get into more specialties, then yeah, you need a different set of information, different set of skills. But if you're like most real estate agents that are selling to the largest market share of clients, which are residential home buyers, they're going to need your services at some point in the future. It's just a question of do you have that relationship? Have you been following up with them? Have you been doing the semi-cold calls with them? Because that's what it's going to feel like every three, four, five, six months or however often it is that you're following up with them over the phone. And depending how motivated they are to sell, if they're extremely unmotivated, that might be somebody you only follow up with every five, six months. But as they get close to being motivated, you're maybe following up with them more often. As they've started to live in their house longer, maybe they have, uh, you know, somebody first moves into a property and, you know, usually at the beginning, they love everything about it. But then after living there for a while, that's where they, the, the, you know, like the honeymoon effect that they call it kind of like starts to wear off or you kind of start to maybe get some frustrations with the house or the neighborhood or whatever it is that you're like, all right, you know, this was great, but now I'm ready for what's next. People have those epiphanies all the time. Every five to seven years, according to the National Association of Realtors, that, hmm, this, this place isn't cutting it for me anymore. I want to move somewhere new. So you want to have that call to action to give them something like, hey, I've got a lender that's been working with a lot of my clients to help uh, get a lower rate. If you want, I could go ahead and pass your information along to them so he could give you a call. Is that something you'd be interested in? There's your call to action. Now, you might have other things it is that you're, you're calling about, uh, especially when you start to have a relationship with them. Then you might just be calling for a birthday, an anniversary, for a holiday or something like that just to wish them well. And even that's a cold call because they're not expecting your call. Those are usually a little easier cold calls. And look, you ready for the secret as to why that one would be easier? Why it would be easier to do a cold call of telling somebody happy birthday? Well, number one, they might 
be somewhat they're not going to be as surprised about your call and that's because you had a compelling reason to call them it's your birthday that's why i'm calling you oh well that makes perfect sense whereas if you called somebody not on their birthday and start wishing them a happy birthday that's not going to make sense that's not a legitimate reason so your reason has to be a legitimate strong powerful reason that's one of the important parts of this and one of the thing i do want to throw in here because we're almost out of time is a script use a script if you're just shooting from the hip just rattling off whatever is on the top of your head you're not going to be nearly as effective as you could be now as you become more experienced you won't necessarily need to to read off of your script but even when you're more experienced you want to lay out your plan of attack when you're going to do some sort of methodical cold calling so you have this process that you're walking people through and you want to follow this closely so that way when it's not getting the results that you want you've had the same consistent thing you've been doing so you can make a minor change to it and see if that that results in any better response rate like maybe you're doing these market updates but you're just doing them about the value of homes and maybe you've been doing that for a while, but you really haven't got any leads. Maybe you've called 100, 1,000 properties and still no leads on it. You might be thinking, huh, well, I've done that exact same script for so many callers and it hasn't worked. Maybe I tweak it a little bit. So you tweak it a little bit and now try another 100 or 1,000 calls. And that's how you dial in the perfect script. And there, there's no perfect script for everyone because we all have different ways we communicate. We all have different styles. We all have different words and phrases that we might use and some of those just roll off of our tongue better than others. So this really needs to be a personal, personalized type. I would recommend starting with some sort of, uh, of framework, some sort of script that already exists, that, that's tried and true and proven, whether it's from some sort of training system or from your broker, whatever the case may be. Just make sure it's something that, that you know has worked previously for others. And then start with that. And as you start to get comfortable with that, you can kind of start to kind of just clean up the little odds and ends that don't necessarily fit your style. But don't change it too much because, again, you want to keep this working until you start to get business in. And then you could really kind of start to experiment with this to really change things up and find what might work significantly better. So make sure you're using a script as well. But it should all be based around that reason for your call. And you have the reason that, that ultimately you're giving them the the value you're providing them and then also the reason for the value you're getting in return what's the value you're getting in return well the relationship you have with them first and foremost their contact information verifying their actual contact information being able to send them emails as well as like hey uh, i've uh, this whole market report gives you a whole list of all the sales that have happened in the neighborhood i could go ahead and email that over to you what's your good email address for you and they might say no to that you might be thinking, as I said, that what if they say no? Well, then they say no and they don't want your email. It's not the end of the world. There's other ways you have to communicate with them. Just because they said a no doesn't mean it's no to everything. It's no to whatever you're specifically asking. And it's just not a good fit for them at that time there. So, And again, so at the end of the day, you're not going to get them all. Some people won't even answer the phone when you call them. Others, they might answer the phone and they're going to hang up on you. Especially if you don't have a good script, you don't have a good reason. It's going to happen. It happens. And the more it is that you do this, and that's why this whole, you know, the happy birthday thing, you're calling somebody to say happy birthday. Not only are they more expecting it, but it's also something you've done before. That's why you're comfortable doing it. That's why you're more likely to pick up the phone to tell somebody happy birthday than pick up a phone and do a cold call to somebody because you may have never done this, whereas we've all wished somebody happy birthday. We've all picked up the phone and made a cold call to somebody to tell them happy birthday or a cold call for whatever. Because again, the cold call is anytime someone's not expecting your call, you're interrupting them. And if you want to be able to get to your call to action to the value you would get from them, you got to have that compelling reason there. So look, this is one of the topics we cover in post-licensing about doing phone prospecting if you haven't taken your post licensing course yet you need that before your first renewal deadline they've extended a little bit right now for this year because of the whole covid thing and all that stuff but if you haven't done your post licensing yet you don't want to wait on this information because this is the information that makes you money your pre-licensing course to get your real estate license if you've already taken that course you're probably already aware of the fact that knowing what legally needs to be in a contract and all these other laws and rules Yes, they're important to make sure you don't lose your license or go to jail, but 
you didn't get your real estate license to stay out of jail. I mean, yes, you don't wanna go to jail, but that's not the reason why you got it. You got the real estate license to make some money with it, so you need to know how to make some money with it. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. That's why you wanna take post-licensing. You might not do everything exactly like we say to do in post-licensing, and it's just gonna be the tip of the iceberg, but you're gonna be so much farther ahead than all the other people who just got licensed by taking your post-licensing course as soon as possible. It's gonna literally help jumpstart your real estate career. Uh, so if you need to take your post-licensing course, we've got live stream as well as on-demand classes for post-licensing courses. So give us a call, 813-333-2676. That's 813-333-2676. Let us help you out through that process. Or if you're just getting your real estate license in the first place, we can help you with that as well. We've actually got some great bundle packages that include our pre-licensing course, all of our study tools, to pass your exam as well as that post licensing course so you could go hit the ground running as soon as you're licensed go take that post licensing course so if you got questions about starting your real estate career about making your real estate career better call us we are here to help we want to see you become successful your success is our success that's the greatest achievement we can have is helping you become more successful because that makes us successful. That's how our business operates. So call us up, 813-333-2676. Let us help you out some way, somehow to get your real estate license, to pass your exam, to take your real estate career to the next level. We're ready to help you. You can also check us out online at tampaschool.com. That's tampaschool.com. It's about all the time we've got for today. If you've liked today's episode on cold call and you want more videos about it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button so that way we know you like this video. If you're not yet subscribed, ring that little bell icon so you get notifications whenever it is that we go live. But other than that, I'll see you guys on Friday for State of Real Estate. The most powerful tool to study for your real estate exam is the question simulator from Tampa School of Real Estate. We've used our years of experience in preparing students for the Florida real estate exam to bring you the most powerful exam study tool available. In the question simulator, you'll be able to go directly to a particular unit so you can focus on the sections where you need the most practice. We have also included the percentages of each unit so you know which units are the most important for your real estate exam. Every question will immediately give you detailed feedback which is almost always more important than the question or the answer themselves. After completing all the questions in a particular unit, you can go through question by question and review any that you've gotten wrong. You could also print out a report at the end of each quiz. The Question Simulator from Tampa School of Real Estate is 100% mobile compatible, so you can practice with test questions anywhere you have your phone with you. Enroll now at questionsimulator.com and get ready to pass your exam.